Hey songwriters and welcome to the songwriting studio. In today's video, we are going to open a can, quite literally. I went to reddit.com and I emailed my subscriber list to say, hey, what are some of your biggest garage band questions? I wanna know. And you guys fired away with some fantastic questions about, hey, what's some great keyboard shortcuts? How do I get my exports to be louder? What about third party plugins? And of course the fan favorite, why use GarageBand or how does it compare to Logic? Well, if you're not already subscribed, you're gonna wanna hit that subscribe button because we're gonna cover these topics and more in the next few weeks. Now, the first question we'll address comes from none other than Pasta Poop, intriguing name, a reddit.com reader who asks, where and how should I get started using GarageBand? Well, that's a great question and it's a good one to start with. First of all, you're gonna have to be a Mac user. If you don't have a Mac, then you can't get GarageBand. Are there alternatives? Yes, there are, and we're gonna answer that in another video, so be looking for that. Number two, you're gonna have to go to the App Store and search for GarageBand and simply download the app. But realize that it might take you two or three days for this thing to fully download and settle in and be ready to use. But most importantly, how do you start using GarageBand? What are its basic functions and features? Well, I've got a five minute tutorial for you called GarageBand in five minutes, where I'm taking literally months and even years of learning and cramming it into a five minute video so you can get started making music right away. Let's dive in. If I could only have five minutes of your time to show you how to write and produce music in GarageBand, this is what I would tell you. All right, start the timer and here we go. After you click on the GarageBand icon at the bottom of your screen, you should see a window like this appear. If you don't see this window, then you've probably already started a project. So just click out of that project and you'll get back to this window. If you click down here on the Recent tab, you can see the projects that you've been working on lately. But we're gonna start with a brand new project in this video, so I'll hit the New Project tab and then hit Empty Project. Now that we have GarageBand open, it's simply gonna ask you what is the first kind of audio track that you want in your project. We're gonna keep it simple, so I'm gonna click on this icon which allows me to record live audio using a microphone or my built-in microphone. And after I hit Create, that quickly we are ready to record. But before we start recording, I want to highly encourage you to do two things. First, always record with a metronome on. This will require you to find and set your tempo before you get started, but it's definitely worth it. This is going to help you stay tastefully on time and enable you to use powerful editing tools later in the production process. Second, make sure you always wear a pair of earbuds or headphones when recording live audio. This will help keep extra noise like the sound of your metronome from bleeding into your recordings. So now that I'm ready to record, it is as easy as hitting the red button. I'll come up top, hit the red record button, and you can see it start to record. Now I'm going to go off screen, record a guitar part, and then come back and let you take a listen. So I've recorded my initial idea, and now let's take a listen. There you go, fantastic. Now that I have my initial idea, I'm ready to start building out my song. So I'll start by going up and hitting the Add Track button, where GarageBand will ask me again what kind of audio track I want to insert into my project next. Last time we did a live audio track, but this time I want to introduce you to the MIDI track. This is one of the coolest tools that GarageBand offers you. I hit create and now a library of digital instruments is available for me to play and add into my project. I'm going to start with a piano. So I'll go over, hit the piano tab and choose a MIDI piano. And now check it out, I have a grand piano ready to play in my project. How do you control this piano you ask? Very simply. On your typing keyboard, hit Command K and it will bring up what's called the Musical Typing feature, which allows you to control and play MIDI instruments using your typing keyboard. How stinking cool is that? I love this feature. 
I'm going to go off screen now, record a piano part, and then I'll come back and let you take a listen. Alright, so I jotted down my piano part, and now let's have a listen. So there we go. It's a simple part, but it sure does add dynamics to your song when you can stack other instruments on top of your original idea. And now you see that the possibilities are endless. You can add as many live audio tracks as you want and have a lead vocal, a background vocal, even a second background vocal, as well as rhythm guitar and lead guitar, even a second one if you want. And then you can add as many MIDI instruments as you want and stack up pianos, synthesizers, basses, drums, whatever you want to make your song a full-blown production. So I'm going to go off screen, finish filling out this song, and then we'll talk about how to finish it. So I finish filling out this song, and I have my original guitar part, a lead vocal, a background vocal, a tambourine, my original piano line, a bass line, and a drum section. So let's take a listen. This is my first song in Garage Band. Mm -mm, and I'm excited now. So, how cool is that? You can record your initial idea and then fill out all kinds of instrumentation around it. So, let's talk about how to edit this song. We'll start with MIDI, and there are lots of powerful tools for editing your MIDI performance that are found here under the Edit window. I highlight the track that I want to go to work on. We'll start with the piano part. So check this out. I can take any note within my MIDI performance and adjust it. I can make it earlier or later if it was out of time, or even adjust its pitch if it was the wrong pitch. How crazy cool is that? Now let's take a few extra seconds and talk about how to export and share your songs. All you do is go up top, click on the Share menu, hit Export to Disk, Name your song, make sure it's set to mp3, and hit export, and you're ready to share your songs with the world, or maybe just your grandma. To keep up with weekly content from here at the Songwriting Studio, simply go to thesongwritingstudio.com and enter your email address.